Okay, it's another late night video about midnight here, and I'm working on my 8.1 Vortec that's in my 38J Winnebago Voyage RV. And my goal is to quieten down this fan, this noisy dude right here, that big thing there. Factory thermostat's 195, and we travel out west quite a bit, going down these big hills and mountains, and the fan kicks in, it just roars, and can't hear yourself think. Temperature gets up close to like 220 to, you know, 219. And I'm going to change the thermostat to a uh, 180. Well, I've got 80 degrees on there, but it's supposed to be a one in front of that. But that's the part number, 2067-180. And uh, it's going to be a 180 degree instead. It looks like a pretty easy job. All these bolts ain't stuck too bad. We'll, we'll find out here shortly. So, of course, all the data, of course, you can see it in this RV. We're on, I'm on top of this doghouse, I guess they call it. Just took the hose clamp off, pulled this little this contraption here. You can see it better. There we go. With the pin and that piece of plastic, pull that off of the shroud right here. That helps allow this to the intake to come up out of the way. And then to get the hose loose is no big deal. Just took a pair of pliers and squeezed the clamp, brought it back, and just got a hold of it, twisted it. And it's just about ready to come off right now. So I'm gonna pop it off, get that out of my way, and see what those bolts are like. Hopefully they'll ease out without giving me much trouble. So we will soon find out. Okay, thermostat. Well, thermostat's not out, but I've got the the adapter, Nick, what do you call that? Got that off. Came off pretty good. It uh, takes a 13 millimeter socket. I use an extension. To, it looks like it'd be hard to get to, but it, it came out pretty well. You can't get exactly straight onto them, but I used a six point socket. And just put good pressure on it and it came right off. So, let's see if we can get the thermostat out of there. Uh, I'm going to need two hands, it looks like, so let me do that. Okay, I got it out. Took a little prying with the, with the pair of pliers, but I can't get my box out of the way. There's the original stat right there. Look at there's no markings on it anywhere telling me that it's a 195, but I believe that's what they came out with from the factory. And here's the replacement. There's, that's 180. One nice thing, they use these rubber gaskets. You don't have to deal with no uh, paper gaskets. It's going to get stuck. You have to deal with scr scratching off and all that stuff. So let's just you can see down into the, into the hole down in there. Just drop it in place. Yep. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty easy. I think you can see it down in there. Well, yeah. there are lights in the way. Anyway, that's, but that's all you gotta do. Pretty easy job. Oh, and antifreeze wise, I probably didn't lose about a quart or so. You may hear some water running. I'm just running some water from the water hose to dilute what little came out so no local cats get into it. So, but yeah, I only, only dropped about a quart of antifreeze, so it's no big deal. Top it right back up. So, we'll put a couple of bolts back in there. So, all in all, real easy job to change the thermostat in your 8.1 Vortec, even in a motorhome. Oh, here's another tip that might come in handy. When you go to remove this, it would help if you have a, a thin, it's a 3H drive extension. But see how this one is, see how thick this is? It's as thick as it is, well, it's over 3 8 thick, what it looks like. But some of your high qual more higher quality ones are actually thinner. See how much thinner that is? And that makes a difference because you're in a tight spot and once you get the sockets on there you're a little bit out of a, at an angle and this thicker extension makes you more at an angle and uh, that thinner extension helps keep the socket straight on the bolt so you don't risk rounding it off so if you can dig through your tools and find you an extension that's nice and thin like this. That's a better example instead of big, thick, goofy thing like that. 
this is a Stanley, and this is a Husky brand, which uh, that might help help you out just a little bit when it comes time to depend on how tight those bolts are. But these came up pretty easy. Well, I just thought of something else. Of course, got the thermostat in. I was getting ready to put the intake boot back on here, and got to thinking it might be a good idea while I'm in here. Is it looks pretty good, but I'm gonna take a little carb cleaner and spray in there just to clean up the carbon. There's a little, little bit around the plate. Just to shine it up just a little bit while I got it apart. So when you get into this project, if you do, pick you up some uh, carb and uh, intake manifold cleaner and uh, spray that in there and melt some of that carbon off. Might help perform us a little bit. Okay, she's up and running. And Got my dual scan gauge set up here. Get that glare out of there so I can make it better light. There we go, it's better. So I'm gonna let it sit here a while and see what the temperature gets up to. Uh, it's climbing pretty quick. We're still in open loop, we'll make sure it closes. And it's pretty, I don't know, it's, it's, it's in the high 70s I think, it's pretty warm tonight. Hopefully it'll get up to temperature. And um, you see the reason why I got the dual gauges, because I, I love being able to monitor stuff, especially in the you know, long-term fuel trims. You know, in case we ever had a, a lean condition or something weird going on, by monitoring those long-term trims, I can catch something ahead of time. And of course, the at the bottom, the TFT, it's transmission temperature. And then I got the, oh, it's there, it tells me, 76 degrees outside. That's, that's the uh, outside temperature. 119 water temp. And I got the engine load. So, of course, we're still in a closed loop. I'll let this run for a while, and we'll see what we get up to. All right, we're slowly climbing, we're up to 170. Of course, we're already in closed loop. It closed, gosh, maybe at 130 or something like that. I forget where it was at. It closed, went into closed loop pretty quick. But, uh, let's see, I'm gonna let Sidra and I, we'll see how long we get. Finally hit 181, it took a while to get there. Finally hit 184. It's been idling for, I don't know, a good 12 minutes or so. Okay, I guess the thermostat opened up because it went up to 184 and it just now dropped to 182. So it'll be interesting to see how it does when I'm on the road and it's a 100 degree day climbing mountains and all that stuff. Because you probably have the added effect of the transmission, the heat off the oil, it may have an effect too. But I think it'll work pretty good. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, that little project went pretty smooth. Now I'm going to show you another project that I also just finished up on. Um, I'll flip this little light on. You'll see some gl something gl little effect up front. See that little glow? All right, now I'll walk around front and show you what that is. Okay, I'm out front now. I'm up close because the cell phone really don't do these lights justice. You can't really tell what's going on. But these are individual little LEDs. They're weatherproof. And I've put them on the, the front. Kind of makes like a little smiley face on the front of the coach. And then I also did it around the head. See, the headlights are not on at all. But this phone don't, really kind of freaks it out. It's just the LEDs going up and around the lights. So it really makes a cool effect going going down the road. But the cell phone just doesn't do it justice at all because it just makes it look all too bright. And it's not that way at all. So, um, but anyway, that's my latest little mod I just did. Just to be different, I guess. Something to do. Heck, and those little LED lights, got them at Amazon. They was like, I don't know, 12, 15 bucks for a roll of them. Uh, to a 12 volt. Pulls less than one amp. Pretty, pretty sweet thing. Anyway, I guess I'm done for the night. Till the next project. Have a great day.
update. Well, I thought I'd do an update on this thermostat install. I put the thermostat in over a year ago, and uh, I thought I'd tell you how, how it works. Got, well, I put in the 180 degree thermostat. And I'm sitting here, just, I've been doing some stop and go, stop and go driving here. It's a bunch of stop lights. I just pulled over. And I've noticed my temperature will be like 195, 206, 208. It fluctuates up and down. Today, you can see the in intake temperature, you know, 110 degrees in your eyelids. But today's actual air temperature is, you know, probably in the 80s. Nice, warm, sunny day. And last summer, as I used this, I went out west with it, and there was times, you know, when we're climbing a hill, a mountain, there's a few times I would see the temperature, you know, climb on up to maybe, you know, 120, just briefly of course the fan would kick in pull it quickly pull it back down so it it does reduce the amount of time I hear the roaring fan but you still will see some high temperatures briefly but the clutch will kick on the fan and pull it right back down um, so like right now I'm sitting here idling in the parking lot with the air conditioner on this is my temperature room so I'm sitting there um, let's see there's something else I was going to say oh yeah now I remember I want to talk about the um, water heater because I know this was concerned about you know will it keep you warm but it's it, fine you know during the winter time you know it'll it'll warm up to like 180 degrees and stay right there at 180 with my scan gauge it's pretty accurate I believe and it uh, keeps you toasty warm so that that's not not an issue at all we, we stay plenty warm with uh, with this thermostat it's not, not a problem so all in all I think it was a good upgrade and I don't hear the fan as much so maybe it saves a little fuel don't know if it's if it's measurable or not. But if I had it to do it over again, I, I'm sure I would. You have a great day. See you later. Bye.